Obedience is all of our quest. And it's not always easy, but it's what we have to work towards. That exact obedience to the commandments of the Lord. Welcome to Come Follow Me. Today we're going to talk about the Doctrine and Covenants, section 102 through 105. In 102 to 105, it seems that one of the main themes is obedience Mm -hmm. and the importance for obedience. So I want to talk about obedience. What is obedience? What's important about it? Well, obedience is like the first law in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. And obedience is basically responding with quickness to that which is righteous. Right. Quick and exact. There's a catch. You have to ask obedience to what? Right. To what and to who? So answer that question. Well, obviously, your obedience and your full devotion belongs to God. That's right. Anyone else would be obedience to the arm of flesh, right? And Brigham Young taught often, and so did Joseph, that we needed to, first of all, live pure and holy lives enough to have the Spirit. Because quite frankly, if we're not living the way we should live, how can we actually have the Spirit of God? If we are too much participating, well, in any way, participating in Babylon, if we haven't removed that from our lives, how can we really expect to have the Spirit? Because he's so easily offended because he can't be in unholy places. So you have to be able to have the Holy Spirit to have revelation. And Brigham taught and Joseph taught that in order to be able to know if revelation and commandments come to you. One, you need to know your doctrine in the gospel well enough to know and recognize and for the spirit to teach you if it came from God or not. He didn't, neither one of them excluded themselves as possibly telling them something that wasn't true. And he said, I I fear this people will be led astray if they do not learn to stand on their own. Joseph Smith said, you you're walking in darkness at noonday and therefore they were under condemnation. So if we are relying on any one person to tell us what to do, or if they say something and we just automatically do it without thinking, that's called blind obedience. So what do we use to know? The scriptures are our measuring stick. The scriptures are the measuring stick. So all revelation and all counsel have to match what you can find in the scriptures. All of it. And if it doesn't, it's not true. And Joseph, it was really interesting to read the history of the church that Joseph wrote because he would write about how he would use the scriptures, especially the Bible, to show that what he was teaching was true. He always used the scriptures. So that's that same thing. Your scriptures are the measuring stick. And so we have that responsibility to know it and to study it. What if you followed a leader like Sylvester Smith? (laughs) What would happen? Well, obviously it wouldn't end well because... Depending on what spirit he was following that yeah. day, right? <laughs> Murmuring, complaining spirit. He, he was also sometimes good, so I don't want to throw him under the bus so much. He also was sometimes good. It's just that when that spirit of contention entered into him, he was pretty, pretty wild. It's interesting because, first of all, the Lord set these people to be a light to the world. That's right. And if they weren't going to be a light then they would be like salt that's lost its savior and thenceforth would be good for nothing. Right. And so that's found in the ninth and 10th verses of 103. Exactly. And it, and it was very important for them to go through these experiences because this is what they were learning. Mm-hmm. You know, you guys are light. You're supposed to stand out and be... Uh, what people can see uh, that that this is the Lord's church. Right. It's interesting because the gospel connects so much. Yes, it does. We can't do that if we are not obedient to God. That's right. That's right. So salt is interesting anyway. What does it mean to lose its savor? Because it's not like, okay, so if I go out and pick herbs and we dry them, they begin to lose some of their, their scent, their efficacy, their flavor over time, diminishes. Mm -hmm. Does salt do that. No. It doesn't. So how does salt lose its savor? If it doesn't diminish over time, if it's always salt, 
How does salt lose its savor? It has to be mixed with something, particularly something like unclean, like dirt. Mm -hmm. Yep, I am not putting any salt on my potatoes if it's been on the dirt first. <laughs> if you put salt into water, have you has you taken the savor out of it? No. Actually haven't, have you? It's still salt. In fact, the, <laughs> this is really interesting. This is a little chemistry for you. The molecules of salt and the molecules of water are not the same size. And so when you mix salt into water, the salt molecules and the water molecules actually are not mixed. It's really, really interesting. It's like thinking about putting rocks into a, into a jar and then you can add some sand over the top and it'll filter all through. Mm -hmm. Well, salt and water are similar. They actually don't mix. Fabulous and amazing. And, and, but yes, so we're going to actually have an activity on that this week so that you can talk about losing our savor. So how do we lose our savor? We, we understand salt only loses its savor when it is not pure. How, how do we lose our savor? Whenever we are polluted, whenever we take something in from the world, we then lose our savor because we are pushing away that which is good and bringing in that which mm -hmm. is bad. So we're not pure. We're not being obedient to the commandments. What do we hear over and over in here? Okay, 103 verse 4. That those who call themselves after my name might be chastened for a little season with a grievous chastisement because they did not altogether hearken unto the precepts and commandments which I gave unto them. If obedience is the first law of heaven, we have to be absolutely obedient to our Heavenly Father and His commandments. He talks about it again in 7 and 8. And just all the way through, they keep not my commandments and hearken not to observe all my words, the kingdoms of the world shall prevail against them. So right before that, he promised that Zion would be redeemed if they would hearken to all his words. Mm -hmm. But if not, they would be chastised for a little season to try their faith, to push and see if they would do what they needed to do. It's like when you become a member of the church. Uh, you make a commitment. Uh, you make a covenant literally with the Lord. Yeah. And when you do that, he tells you what what the covenant's about, mm -hmm. but then like baptism, he, he says, this is what you will get, but you need to do this in order to get this. Exactly. So who are we? Yeah. We learn it in verse 17. Take a look at 17. We are the children of Israel and the seed of Abraham. So we need to be led out of bondage by power and with a stretched out arm. So bondage is the sin of this world. The Lord can lead us out. In fact, later he says, I will fight your battles. Yeah. You don't need to fight them. I will fight them. Many, many examples of that in Scripture. We don't even have to <laughs> question whether he can. Will he? That depends on us. But he will fight the battles. So we're Israel. And so because of that, we need to act not in fear. We need to be more like David. Who, who is this man who defies the armies of the living God? Right? And this little boy and this enormous man, I mean, we figured out this week in our studies, he was probably close to 11, 12 feet tall if you go with the 21-inch cubit. That's a massive person. Mm -hmm. Why wasn't David afraid? Because he knew who he was. He knew who his God was. And my God is bigger than your God, right? It's so vital that we understand that. When you understand who you are, where you come from, there is more meaning in life. There's mm -hmm. a purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think that it increases our desire to be obedient. Because if we know who we are and we know who our God is and we understand the promises that he's made and we are diligent and faithful and humble, there's a formula for it. You find it all over the place. You find it in 103.36, 104.79 to 80, 105.12. Be diligent, faithful, prayer, humble. And I was just reading this morning in Alma. I just love, I love Alma. Oh my gosh. Cannot love the writings of anybody as much as Alma. But when he talks to his son, Shiblon, and he said to not pray thinking you're better than your brethren. He says to pray this way. Oh Lord, forgive my unworthiness and remember my brethren in mercy. Wow. Wow. How do you stay humble? You remember, I'm not, I have some things to work on. 
and you do everything in your power because as soon as it becomes disgusting to you, you will not do it again. It's that simple. It kind of reminds me of, um, was it Benjamin's speech to the people? Um, when he says that we are less than the dust of the earth. Yeah. And I always was so confused. I'm like, why am I less than the dust of the earth? I am less than the dust of the earth because the dust listens to Heavenly Father better than I do. Absolute obedience. It gives a command and, yep, I'm on my way. I'm going to do it. <laughs> so that's really, 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 really vital. But all of these scriptures, I'm just going to give you a list of scriptures here. 103, 4, 7, and 8, and 31, <clears throat> as well as 104, 7. And it talks about 104 is actually, they were reorganizing the United Firm. And he said, because there are some who are not doing what they're supposed to do. So it was to protect the innocent mm -hmm. because of the unrighteousness of the disobedient. So 104, 7, 104, 52 talks about they broke their covenants. Oh my gosh, you cannot break a covenant. You can't, can't, can't. They made a covenant, they have to live it. 105, again, 2 through 6, that really lays out the fact that they had not been obedient to the Lord's commandments, and especially the brethren in the East. So you've got the people in Missouri not being as obedient as they ought to be, kind of bragging a little bit, people going without being prepared. You've got the brethren from the East that won't send money to help, won't join Zion's camp to help. Let their God help them. Okay, now that's different than saying the Lord will fight your battle, isn't it? We do everything in our power first. Mm -hmm. First. So all these disobedience, 105, 9, and 10, it's a consequence of disobedience. 105, 17. He tells them why. But then he has a list of blessings that he gives to the obedient. Go ahead, Joseph. There's also a punishment in 104 for breaking the covenant mm -hmm. that they're supposed to be obedient to. Yep. Where's that? Um, it's 104, 6, 5, and 6. Okay. And... He tells them that because they broke the covenant, or those that did, would be trodden down. They would be in, um, almost like cast out from mm -hmm. among them. It's like the salt under our feet, huh? And the reason he gives to that, is because you have done this, he says, I'm doing this because I will not be mocked. No, well, he will not. We have to remember there's consequences for our actions. This um, section 104 also brings out the fact that when we are disobedient, we bring a curse upon ourselves. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Exactly. So we'll put this probably in the comments or we'll put it into the blog, but there's blessings to the obedient. There's cursings to the disobedient. There is a formula for how to be obedient and a solution. Here's the Lord's solution. Let's just close with that and then our memorization scripture for the week. 105, 23 to 25, he tells them to be faithful, prayerful, humble. Reveal not the things that I've revealed unto you until it is wisdom. That's that bragging. The Well, eventually it's all going to be ours and you're going to be out of here. And oh my goodness, <laughs> I would be mad too if my neighbor told me that. And we wonder why they had problems in yeah. Missouri. <laughs> Neither boast of faith nor of mighty works, but carefully gather together as much in one region as can be consistently with the feelings of the people, and I will give unto you favor and grace in their eyes that you may rest in peace and safety while you are seeking for judgment and redress. They did have some of that, but eventually they just were not obedient enough. And 38 to 40 in that same chapter, he says, Say, sue for peace. Live in peace with your neighbors. You don't need to be arguing and fighting. If you're living the commandments, the Lord blesses you no matter what right? So really what we're talking about is the need to live the laws of God. And so this week we've selected 105 verse 5, because what are we trying to do? We're trying to build up Zion. How do we have to do it? Will you read it for us this week, Miranda? I don't think we ever have you read the memorization scripture. 105 verse 5. I think this one's really important to remember. And Zion cannot be built up unless it is by the principles of the law of the celestial kingdom. Otherwise, I cannot receive her unto myself. Okay. That really just says it all. What are we trying to do? Who are we? What does it need? We have to live according to the celestial law. We're Zion, or we're trying to be Zion. So were they. 
I don't want any of our discussion to make it look like these were bad people. And when Joseph was in Nauvoo, he said, these are the best people. He loved the people. They loved him. Obedience is all of our quest. And it's not always easy, but it's what we have to work towards. That exact obedience to the commandments of the Lord. And if we can get ourselves to that point, we will be able to go back and redeem Zion. It hasn't happened yet. But when we get to that point, we will go redeem Zion again. So each of us has that task to become a Zion person, to become a Zion family, to become a Zion community, so that Zion can be built up and the Lord can gather together that righteous remnant who are to go to Missouri and build Zion. All right, we are going to close out our day with a song that they sang in Zion camp. And since we have several of us sick, you might have noticed Catherine's not with us today. Too sick to be on camera. Joseph is going to close for us singing, Hark, listen to the trumpeters. Just one verse. Hark, listen to the trumpeters, they sound for volunteers. On Zion's bright and flowery mount, behold their officers. Their horses white, their armor bright, with courage bold they stand. Enlisting soldiers for their king to march to Zion's land. Thank you. Let's enlist <coughs> as soldiers for our king. Let's enlist. Till we meet again. If you've been liking our videos, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe, and if you want to receive notifications, hit the bell. Also, find and like us on Facebook. We hope to see you next time. <laughs>